Okay, so the question is, should you buy one Arduino Uno for $30 or should you buy 10 Arduino Unos for $3 instead? Well, I will answer this question today because today it's all about Arduino Uno, the cheap ones, the expensive ones and everything in between. And I know that many people think that those are obsolete because they are old, slow and have small memory, but I still do think that for the beginners, Arduino Uno is one of the best microcontroller boards that you can get and to start with. So for all the Arduino Uno boards, what's the same is the main chip, the microcontroller, which is the 80 Mega 328. And depending on the package, it might look big, like that, or it might be slightly smaller, or it can be very small, but it's always the very same chip with the same amount of memory, having 32 kilobytes of flash and 2 kilobytes of RAM memory. Again, quite limiting, but also quite challenging. Also what's the same is the footprint, the shape of the PCB, and the placement of the pins. And this UNO from DF Robot nicely shows that those green pins are digital pins, the red are power pins and the blue are analog input pins. What's usually different is the second chip on the board, responsible for communicating with the main chip over the USB, so USB to serial chip, and that's for example this chip. And depending on the brand of the chip, sometimes you need to install the drivers first to get it working. So let's take a look at the cheapest UNO I was able to find and that's this one. You can get it from AliExpress for just below $3. And I'm actually quite surprised with this board because it has something that even the official one is missing and that's the second row of header pins so you can solder anything you want in there. Obviously the good choice would be to solder male hair pins and that's quite helpful because a lot of times you will get a center with only having female hair pins and with normal UNO that's a problem. You will need to use some kind of shield like for example this one but that's not a problem with this cheap UNO. I also have those two red boards. One is from Illicrow and the second one is from the Seed Studio. And this one has some extra connectors. This one has the micro SD card holder but what's actually special about those two boards is this little switch. And it allows you to switch between 5V and the 3.3V logic. And as you might know, the Arduino Uno works with the 5V logic, so if you want to use it with some 3.3V sensor or display or even for example ESP32, you need to use some logic level shifter. Well, not with those boards, you can just flip the switch and now you have the 3.3V Arduino Uno. So all the logic pins are working on the 3.3V. And again, that's quite helpful. Also, this UNO from Seed Studio has the second row of pins as well. I also have this pink UNO and I'm sure I have more colors laying around, but I want to talk about this UNO called Robo UNO Plus. And you can immediately see that it looks quite different. It has double header pins, although both are female, but you also get four push buttons, three NeoPixels, the RGB LEDs, small buzzer and the I2C header pin specifically made for connecting OLED display. So unlike the usual UNO, where you have to use jumper wires to connect everything together, this board already has a lot of components and you can probably create a lot of projects before you need to connect anything else. And since I've already created some projects using buttons, NeoPixels and OLED displays, let's see how hard it would be to run those projects on this Robo UNO Plus board. And let's start with the OLED display because after all, this channel is mainly about displays. You can connect any i 2 c OLED display, but this space is specifically made for the 128 by 32 pixel OLED display as mentioned on the silk screen. And I of course do have this display, so I'll just connect it into the hairpins. And I also have this video with the very same display showing the 3D compass. So I will open the Wokwe sketch and Wokwe is a free online Arduino emulator and I can run the sketch in here and change the heading using this potentiometer. So let's try to run the very same sketch on our Arduino Robo Plus Uno board. I will copy the code into the clipboard. Then open the Arduino IDE and paste the code in here. And since the Arduino Uno board is just a standard Uno board, I can go to Tools, Board and select the Arduino Uno board from the list. Then I will connect the Uno board to the PC using the USB cable and select the correct port, which will most likely be the last one, the highest one. And since our sketch is using some libraries, specifically the U8G2 library, I have to go to libraries and type in U8G2 and make sure that the U8G2 library is being installed. By the way, the Arduino and the wire libraries are already installed. There is no need to install those. So I will just close the libraries and then click the upload button to upload the sketch to the Arduino board. 
and in a few seconds we should see something on the OLED display. And nothing is happening because we don't have the potentiometer connected to the pin A0 to the analog input pin A0. But maybe if I just put my finger on this pin I might be able to change the voltage. Yep, yeah, seems like it's possible. But I think that a better way would be to go back into the Arduino IDE. And in here let's find the code where we are getting the heading from the potentiometer, which is this line, the compass degrees. And instead of getting it from the potentiometer, I will just increase it all the time, so compass degrees plus plus. And if the compass degrees is bigger than 360, in that case I will jump back to zero. So let's try to upload it one more time. And now the compass is animating all the time. So the OLED display is working as expected, so let's move on and try those four buttons. And I have a lot of videos using buttons, for example this one, which not only uses buttons, but also the OLED display. And as I'm pressing those buttons, I'm changing the content of the OLED display, and you can also see that those buttons have LED inside, but I think that I can again use this code, so I'll open the walk with sketch. And in here I can do the same thing, so pressing the button will change the content on the display on the OLED screen. So I will just copy the code into the clipboard and then paste the code into the new Arduino sketch. Now before uploading this to the Arduino, I need to set to which pins I have those buttons connected. And for that I will take a closer look at the board itself. And the connections are listed on the back of the PCB, so it looks like that the buttons are connected to pins 7, 6, 4 and 2, being the buttons left, top, right and bottom. So let's keep this connection in mind and jump back into the Arduino IDE and change those pins in here. So the down pin will be 2, the left pin will be 7, the up button pin is 6 and the right button pin is 4. Now I also have LEDs defined, but since those buttons don't have any LEDs inside, I can just use any pin, for example, let's just use pin number 13 for all of those. And I think that's all that's needed, so I can just upload it to the Arduino board. And once this is uploaded, I do see something on the display, and I can press the buttons and change the content on the display, but those images look wrong because the content was made for the 128 by 64 pixel display, and this display only has the 128 by 32 pixel resolution. So let me actually use that 128 by 64 pixel OLED display instead. And press the reset button. And this display works fine and looks fine, but it's rotated by 90 degrees. So let me actually use this huge display, which also has the same resolution and the same chip. And now the orientation of the buttons is matching the content on the OLED display and you can press those buttons and change the content, change the images. So we have the OLED display and all those buttons working. Let's move on to the last step and that's lighting up those NeoPixel LEDs. And again, I have many videos using NeoPixel LEDs. For example this one where I was constructing 7 segment display using NeoPixel strips. And same as the last time, I will open the walk with simulation. And from here I will copy the code into the clipboard and then paste it into the Arduino IDE and this time we are also using some library and this one is called Adafruit NeoPixel so if you don't have this installed you have to go to libraries and search for Adafruit NeoPixel and make sure that this library is being installed. The only thing that we need to know is to which pin we have those NeoPixels connected and for that I will again look at the back side of the PCB. And in here it says that the NeoPixels are connected to pin D8, the digital 8 pin. So let's go back into the Arduino IDE and change the code to set the LED pin to pin number 8 and then we can upload this to the Arduino board. And right as I do so, the NeoPixels should be shining, actually only two of them because I wasn't using the first one in my code, so that's not a problem of this board, it's just in my code I wasn't lighting up the first NeoPixel. So it seems like that everything works as expected. Now if you don't want to use those NeoPixels and you still want to use the digital pin number 8, you can just use this switch which will disconnect those NeoPixels and then you can use the digital pin number 8 for anything else. There is also a buzzer with the dedicated switch connected to pin number, let me see, the D9, but I will not bother you with those buzzer sounds today. So I think it's time to answer the question from the beginning of the video. Which Arduino Uno should you get? 
The $3 Arduino Uno board is nice, but this board is just so much better. I mean with buttons, NeoPixels and an easy way how to connect the OLED display, you can create dozens of projects without the need to use a single jumper wire. And once you do, you have the extra row of pins that you can use. But there is a catch, you cannot buy this Robo Uno Plus just yet. But you can go to this website and sign up for updates to make sure that you will be first one to know when the Robo Uno Plus is finished. Also down there you can see that the current version looks slightly different than my version, looks like they are still making some adjustments and updates, and I cannot wait to see the final version. And that's it for today, if you have any questions or comments, please put those down in the comment section, also please let me know which is your favorite Arduino Uno board, thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you soon, thanks and bye.